So hey, we're back at Joy of Being, this uh, healing sanctuary in Moss Beach, California. And today we're going to be talking about the elements, water, earth, fire, and air. So you might be wondering, what does that have to do with your spiritual growth? And what does that have to do with creating sacred space? Well, in the context of our conversation here, it's a really potent piece of all of this. So the idea to understand is really that you're not alone. You know, you as an expanding being, an awakening soul are here as part of a larger context. You know, we're connected to the animals, we're connected to the earth, we're connected to the heavens, and we're connected to these elements. And these elements actually are an important part of us, right? We are 70 to 90% water in our own bodies. You know, we access fire through our passionate hearts. We breathe air and we walk upon this earth. You know, our bodies are essentially a part of the earth. So by connecting to this whole, it will help bring wholeness inside of us. And there's also a mystical kind of magical part of this too, is that these elements have spiritual representation and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But essentially what we're really seeking to do here is to create a sacred space inside of us and through the way that we honor and the way that we communicate with the world around us helps to bring us closer to that. So in indigenous tribes and ways all around the world, you know, connecting with the elements has always been a really critical part of how they do that. If you've ever been to any kind of a Native American ceremony or perhaps a South American ceremony or maybe something else where they, the leaders will call in the directions. And that has a relationship with the elements. So we've got east, south, west, and north, but each one of those is also connected with an element. So we call those in as a way of honoring those parts of ourselves, those parts of our environment, and to bring forth the spiritual wisdom that is a part of those directions and those elements. So even um, when we think about our physical bodies, there's an element of the elements that are also a part of this. Um, in traditional Chinese medicine, for example, you know, they actually, the practitioners diagnose our health by checking elements and each one of the organ systems has a, a uh, relationship with elements. So for example, the kidneys are about water um, and we can find balance or imbalance in our systems according to these elemental diagnoses. And when we look at elements on another level, uh, on the spiritual level, we can just notice where we may be in balance or out of balance. So for example, you know, you may know people who are in their heads a lot and they just, they talk and they don't seem to have any sense of grounding. You know, those people have perhaps too much air. You know, people, other people who might be super watery, right? So they flow with things, which can be a good attribute. But if you are flowing too much and you don't have boundaries and presence, then you're too watery and you wanna be able to bring elements to you to help support you in being more balanced. So in doing this, in creating your soul altar, this is another way that you can um, speak to the universe and say, I need more of this, I need more of this, I need less of this. And it's important in all of this to really move beyond yourself, right? By connecting with these elements and utilizing all of this for your own healing. So let's talk for a moment about the elements and the relationship with the cardinal directions. So the element of air is associated with the east, which in this building happens to be in that direction. So that, that um, direction has to do with um, with air, with new beginnings, with the sunrise, with, with the mind, with new possibility. And each and every day when we wake up, we have that new possibility. So we see the sun coming up in that direction. So when we look to the south, which is where 
this altar is sitting. You know, we tune into heat, uh, fire, creativity, play, um, childhood. And of course, I found myself just serendipitously putting this altar right here in the south. And honestly, I didn't know that that was um, the, a relationship when I started to do it. I, I honestly just came into the space and felt tuned into that wall. And then when I started to construct it, I thought, wow, how perfect. You know, this is about creativity. This is about play. This is about spirit. And that's the message that I have for you with this whole process to bring more of that for yourself. And by creating a, an altar space like this, you know, you are being creative. You are birthing a deeper level of yourself and doing it with color and, and images and symbols. And, you know, it's an opportunity to really be artistic from that deeper place inside you that is just moved to create. And so have fun doing that. Um, okay, so we're back to the directions in the West. That's the element of water. So here in California, our ocean is to the west, and the west is about emotion, that part of us that's watery, that feels, and tapping into our deeper unconscious. So another important part of who we are, and needless to say, we need water constantly to stay alive. So then we uh, think about the north, and the north relates to the element of earth, where the tall, strong trees are, and how you know we find that place of earthiness and connection to make us strong and give us the strength that we need to move forward in life. So how is it that you can bring these kinds of presences, if you will, to your altar? So for air, for example, you know, you might be um, utilizing, like I have here, like I have a feather. Um, I also have images of archangels, which are very celestial in nature. This image here is um, symbolic of divine love, you know, which I consider to be something kind of related to air. You could use chimes, you could have a picture of the sunrise, you could have a, a statue of, of somebody breathing you know there's all different ways that you can do that um, fire of course you know is demonstrated most commonly by candles um, you could also have you know some type of a picture that represents fire you could have uh, passionate lovers like I have this statue here that is tantric in nature and it shows two lovers together you could have a, a something of image or a statue of, of Jesus you know, who really represents this, this one sacred heart. You could have um, children playing, you know, whatever speaks to you exactly. Um, to bring in the element of water, you know, often in ceremonial settings, I'll have a bowl of water sitting out. And today I've got water in the vases. So that's how I brought the water in. Um, you could have a picture of a waterfall, you could have, you know, a statue of a mermaid. You know, there's just all different ways that you can do this. Um, for Earth, um, you could use rocks, crystals. You could have uh, some dirt on your altar from a special place that's meaningful to you. You could have some sort of imagery of trees. You could have a statue of an Earth goddess. Um, I actually have this one here, which is. She's like a, an earth goddess with the infinity uh, spiral inside of her. And of course, I have crystals. Um, so those are just some ideas of how you might do that. So when you do the meditation practice today, it'll take you into a journey space where you can start to listen and discover what's happening inside of you as you relate to the elements and where there may be balances or imbalances so that when you um, bring it to your altar uh, the images and symbols that come to you that will help you to heal yourself by being present to that intention and you may also receive some guidance like you know i may you know need to go see an acupuncturist and get some help with my kidneys or whatever the case may be so this is um, useful for your own healing 
And you might also consider elements when you're placing your altar, like where is the location that you're going to put your altar. So um, this one landed in the south. I've definitely had them in all different locations, and there's usually some kind of connection there um, for me and the purpose at, at the time. So that said, we're going to dive into the meditation now. And uh, don't forget to have your journal with you so you can take some notes at the end. <laughs> 